Hello students, welcome to the class, welcome to Math Degree College. In the last class, we can see what is the purpose of studying IFRS and how important the IFRS in the name of globalization. So in this class, we will try to analyze what is the meaning of IFRS and need of IFRS and features of IFRS. So let us start with the meaning of IFRS. So the name indicates IFRS refers to International Financial Reporting Standards. So in last class we discussed what is accounting standards. So in any country's accounting system based on the given by any accounting body or the government they can give a set of accounting standards for uh, frame uh, guidelines or preparation of accounting standards. That is what we call it as accounting standards. Based on that any company is going to prepare the accounting, account, accounting reports or financial statements. So when come to the IFRS is the same but here they can take the entire world together like a universal law, universal law. It means global laws. So here International Accounting Standard Board uh, is there. So to overcome the various problems faced by the accounting standards in different countries they can prepare a set of standards. They can prepare a set of standards which will be accepted by the entire world which will be accepted accepted by the entire world and the companies adopt these accounting standards to prepare its financial statements globally to prepare its financial statements globally that is what you call it as GAAP generally accepted accounting principles given by international accounting standard board what we call the IASB so here IASB gives certain standards which will be adopted by the entire world entire world what are the public companies is there so all public companies going to adopt a single set of standards to prepare the financial statements or to prepare the financial reports that is what we call it as IFRS that is what we call it as IFRS so here what, what are the benefits that we are going to get in from this means so overall the meaning conveys is a single, a single set of uniform standards which will be prepared by the International Accounting Standard Board to all its public companies across the world to preparation of its financial statements and financial reporting. So that is what we call it as IFRS. That is what we call it as meaning of IFRS. Meaning of IFRS. Then what is the need for IFRS? So what is the necessities? In last class we discussed some of the problems of why IFRS exists. Here we come across the similar needs of IFRS. So here what is the first law, the first need is differences in laws. Differences in laws. Say for example, take India. Take India. So in India, we have an accounting system, we have an accounting standard. So and we have different taxation policies. Is this the taxation policy in India and the taxation policy in China or any other country is the same? No. For example, in India, you can take the central union, state, uh, central territory. Some countries, some states will have fully exempted. Some states may not. Like tax exemptions, accounting systems. Accounting system is same. Like tax, ex tax exemptions. So, it, they may be different. So, it may be different from country to country. So, the system and regulations may not at all same in all the countries. May not at all same in all the countries. Because every country has their own accounting body, has their own accounting statute. So that will define the rules and regulations. The government will define the taxation policies based on needs and requirements of the government. So on that time what happened? On that time what happened? The accounting statements will not be a same. Will not be a same. So it affects again the profits. It affects again the losses. So it is what you call it as difference in loss. So difference in loss. So to mainly to overcome this problem, they may go for IFRS. So it is what we call it as International Financial Reporting Standards. So my major problem is difference in the loss. So because of difference in loss, the company financial position may get changed. The company financial position may get changed. The treatments may get changed. The guidelines may get changed. It is what we call it as differences in law. Then uniform accounting standards. So, the main purpose of implementing IFRS is to overcome the various discrepancies 
between the discrepancies in the financial statements and accounting treatments and recognition and uh, valuation criteria. So here when the implementation of IFRS, when the gap standards will be implemented by the IASB. So on that time everyone has to follow the same rules and regulations and preparation of its financial statements and the reporting and preparation of its financial reports. So on that time what happened? Uniform accounting standards is going to come. So now there is no uniform standards. Every country has their own uniform standards. Every country has their own accounting standards and principles. Based on that, they are going to prepare the financial statements. It is correct as per their law. So it might be wrong as per the other country law. So there is what is called as due to the overcome of union, there is no uniform standards, there is no uniform accounting standards across the world. So IASB is going to give it uniform standards. This is what is called as uniform accounting standards. Uniform accounting standards. Then quality information. So we know nowadays uh, the entire world is less on the information and the data. So up to information it should be accurate and it should be quality in nature. So information is one of the key source for decision makings of any top level management. So on that time when two different companies in different nations providing different financial statements that leads to a number of complications might be not understand might be does not give a clear picture about the company's profits so it impacts on top level management to make decisions so quality of information will not come with the national accounting standards that's what they go going for IFRS it is what we call it as quality of information when you implement an IFRS to all public companies listed with those who are qualified companies so at that time what happens once you prepare the financial statements once you prepare the financial reports which will be accepted by across the world which will be accepted by across the world at that time the financial information especially the financial information in the company how much important for the external organization it's double important for internal organization also the main purpose is to make the decisions and to make the strategies. So IFRS try to give that quality of information to the top level management. That is what you call it as quality of information. That is, these are the needs. Well, that means why we are going to study IFRS. You can come across these three points and we can see some of the features of IFRS. Yeah, I hope you understand now what is the meaning and purpose of studying IFRS. So after that, we are going to extract some more features from the meaning. So the features of IFRS, the first one is free from bias. Free from bias. No matter which country it is, no matter which company it is, wherever in the world you are, you have to go, go with the same kind of set of standards for preparation of financial statements and financial reporting. All the time, it can easily make sure of your accounting reports. It is what you call it as free from bias. That means they want partiality. The board uh, based on the country, based on the company, based on the nature of business, nothing. If IASB set, uh, gives certain set of standards to the pulp listed companies, so every company across the world, they have to prepare the financial statements based on the given standards. That is what you call it as free from bias. Then comparability. Comparability is very very important because we cannot compare the aqua financial statements when it is prepared based on different principles. Different principles. So for example, take Indian accounting system. So the golden rules of accounting will be same. Take a English accounting system that will be different. What we call debit, they call credit. What we call credit, they call debit. So like completely it changes. Even though the financial preparation of financial statements will come, so well we cannot compare when the accounting policies are different between the countries. So it's impossible to compare. So when you go for IFRS, all the time we can easily compare that over the previous year to current year, or a company to company, or a nation to nation. This is what you call it as comparability. So IFRS adds comparative future to the financial statements and financial reports. Then you can see understandability. 
So understandability in the sense means the way we understood by looking at the financial statements. For example, for example, you can see nowadays almost every company has to disclose financial statements in the form of public in the newspapers or magazines. When you look at some balance sheet that we can easily recognize what are the assets, what are the liabilities. Hope you remember earlier we are going to prepare the financial statement based on horizontal format. Liabilities rupees, assets rupees. Now you can observe the company's act itself is going to change. You have to prepare only on vertical format. Vertical format. First liabilities, then equities and capital, then debentures, then current liabilities, then the followed assets will go. Any company is going to present its financial statements in vertical format only. You can observe nowadays our books also get updated. We are all preparing the any balance sheet and the PL account in vertical format only. Because of what? Who, wherever you can see it should be easily understandable. So if you prepare some statement horizontally, if you prepare some statement vertically or else you can prepare some other mode of form of your balance sheet and penal accounts. We won't understand easily. So to make the understandability of the users because you know all public companies, the main uh, shareholders have to look at the financial statements, stakeholders, debenture holders. They should analyze your company based on your based on our financial reports. So if the financial reports are very, very difficult to understand, obviously there is a possibility of shifting the company or leaving that company. So whatever you prepare, it should be in an easy way. Even a common person have a look, he can understand the basics. It is what he called as the purpose of understandability. So with the help of IFRS, we can make our accounting reports so simple we can make our accounting reports so simple and easy to understand by anyone that is what we call it as understandability then accrual basis of accounting so you can see accrual basis concept like uh, transactions happened that we record in our books of accounts until unless transaction realize we won't post usually that is what we call it as accrual basis but here in income to IFRS, what are the transactions that you record, either asset or liability or income or expense or any other thing that should be easily recognized or reorganized by the IFRS because IFRS gives a certain set of uh, principles and standards. So based on that, you can easily post your related item to the respective financial statement. That is what we call it as accrual basis of accounting because they can give certain set of process of recording or identifying income or expenses. So based on that, you have to transfer it into your books of accounts. That is what we call it as accrual basis of accounting. Then you can see timeliness. Timeliness in the sense means very short period of time that we are taking the information into accountable or we are taking the accounts to be prepared anything. So IFRS gives timeliness means IFRS very easily we can grab the information what has recorded in our books of accounts uh, globally. Why globally in the sense means because uh, a company is a multinational company. Imagine the company doing business on 10 to 15 countries. So in 10 to 15 countries they are following different accounting principles no matter they have to prepare the financial statement based on their country's rules and regulations. Okay. And the time what happened, somehow the, comp the company want to a decision with a shareholder, meet, uh, make a meet, meet the shareholders across the world. So on the time it's impossible to convert and take the information. So imagine when the IFRS is there, all countries financial statements based on the uniform standards, it's easy to grab the information and it easily convey the information to the end users. So it, it makes our work so simple and easy of doing in nature. That is what we call it as timeliness. This is the futures of meaning and futures of IFRS.